viruses like the COVID-19 virus. Influenza virus and other viruses attack their host cells introducing their genetic material into the host cell. This genetic material contains components that cause disease as well as components that contain instructions on how the cell can produce more copies of these viruses, thereby causing the virus to multiply. Some types of viruses physically insert their genes into the host genome, thereby causing disease. Viruses like these could be used as vehicles to carry genes of interest into the human cell. What if the genes that cause disease in the virus can be removed and replaced with genes encoding a desired effect? For example, those coding for insulin production in the case of diabetes, leaving the genes which allow the virus to replicate intact. This is the basic concept behind viral vectors and their use in gene therapy. There are many types of viruses that have been modified in the laboratory for use in gene therapy applications. Some of the more commonly modified viruses include retrovirus, adenovirus, adeno-associated virus, AAV, and herpes simplex virus. All these viruses differ in how well they transfer genes to the cells they recognize and are able to infect, and whether they alter the cell's DNA permanently or temporarily. Retroviral vectors can permanently integrate into the genome of the infected cell, but require methodic cell division for transduction. Adenoviral vectors can efficiently deliver genes to a wide variety of dividing and non-dividing cell types, but immune elimination of infected cells often limits gene expression in vivo. Adeno-associated virus also infects many non-dividing and dividing cell types, but has a limited DNA capacity. Herpes simplex virus can deliver large amounts of exogenous DNA. However, cytotoxicity and maintenance of transgene expression remain as obstacles. Many gene therapy clinical trials rely on retroviruses or adenoviruses to deliver the desired gene. Today, chimeric viral vector systems that combine advantageous properties of two or more viral systems are now being explored. Viruses have evolved to become highly efficient at nucleic acid delivery to specific cell types while avoiding immunosurveillance by an infected host. These properties make viruses attractive gene delivery vehicles, or vectors, for gene therapy. Most of the applications of viral vectors have been in cell and gene therapy development. However, there are a few other applications of viral vectors in vaccine development, drug discovery and biomedical research. Retrovirus, adenovirus, and AAV vectors are being evaluated currently in several clinical trials for treatment of diseases such as cancer, arthritis, cardiovascular and other metabolic, muscular, hematologic, ophthalmologic, and infectious diseases. Though the basic mode of gene introduction currently shows much promise, Doctors and scientists are still working hard to fix many potential problems that could exist. Some of which include viral tropism. Generally, viruses can usually infect more than one type of cell. Therefore, there is a risk of infecting other cells that were not intended to be infected when they are used to carry genes into the body. Somatic cell mutation is another danger that the new gene might be inserted in the wrong location in the DNA possibly causing harmful mutations to the DNA or even cancer. This has occurred in clinical trials for X-linked severe combined immunodeficiency patients, in which hematopoietic stem cells were transduced with a corrective transgene using a retrovirus, and this led to the development of T-cell leukemia in 4 of 20 patients. When viruses are used to deliver DNA to cells inside the patient's body, there is a slight chance that this DNA could unintentionally be introduced into the patient's reproductive cells. If this happens, it could produce changes that may be passed on if a patient has children after treatment. The viral vector could cause an immune reaction. There is a possibility that transferred genes could be overexpressed, producing so much of the missing protein as to be harmful. Some viruses have the ability to regain their virulence when they get into the host cells thereby posing a serious biosafety concern. Other viruses could be transmitted from the patient to other individuals or into the environment. 